in regards to a voluntary society versus a heavy-handed coercive government-based society. How do we find balance? What are the consequences of a big government system, versus a small government system? Don't you think that if it was all voluntary, that roads, bridges, trains, water systems, education, health care, prison reform, drug reform, immigration reform, etc. It would never get done because not enough would voluntarily give? We all want less government but how? Don't you think we had these services before the federal government got involved? For example, with the Department of Education. It's like saying we wouldn't have education, if it wasn't for taxes that the federal government collects. While it's true that the Department of Education funds schools, and provides curriculum, they are not very good at it. The Department of Education has only existed since 1980, and since they took over, educational scores have dropped dramatically. We used to be number one in things like math and science. Now in those subjects we rank at almost the lowest levels in developed nations. Such as number 28 for math, and science is in a similar disposition. The government does things, and they do things that we need done. But just because they do them, it doesn't mean that we couldn't do it without them. The Department of Education is only a recent example of that. But we had roads, bridges, police, fire departments etc., long before the federal government got involved. For example, when the Department of Justice started delegating funds and policies to local police departments, that is when the drug war got out of control. Which is why we now have more people in prison, than any other nation. Or roads and bridges. The private market was developing roads and bridges just fine before the federal government came in and politicized it. Now they make infrastructure a job-making goal, rather than just building necessary infrastructure. Now we have 100,000 of thousands of roads and bridges that are in disrepair, because we are trying to keep up with roads and bridges that we never needed. The market drives infrastructure naturally, and before the federal government got involved, those projects were sustainable. But the saying is true, when you subsidize something, you get more of it. Like poverty. The more they subsidize poverty, the more we have gotten. Like with immigration. The more we subsidize and give immigrants, especially illegal ones, free services, and incentives, the more illegal immigration we have gotten. So no, I do not think that the federal government does a good job at these things. I think they do the job, but they screw it up. This is evident by how big our national debt is, and how low our educational ranking is, and other aspects of society. Before we had an ever-increasing coercive system, we had all of the services that we have now, we just had a lot more accountability and a lot less waste, when these things were planned for, and funded at a local level. So how do we fix it? We can't just end the current system. Everything will fall to pieces. Right? Our system has not been this way for long. If you dial back the clock 100 years, most of these government agencies did not exist. The government was not collecting any income taxes. Yet we had a stronger middle class. No national debt. Much higher educational scores and ranks in the world of education. We also had more jobs. I think most of our downfall occurred when the government started taxing people's income. This is when our country saw a major exodus of jobs and businesses to other countries. I think that businesses are just greedy, and they left our country to find cheaper labor. I think everyone has a bit of greed and most have a sense of entitlement. But you have to look at it this way. By 1944, the IRS was taxing wealthy people 94% of their income. So you mean people were only working to receive 6% of their income? Yes, exactly. That is the biggest reason that businesses started exporting jobs to other countries with less tax burden. It was the only way they could survive with that extreme of a tax rate. You're right. I wouldn't want to go to work, if I only received 6% of my earnings. That doesn't seem fair. I agree. 
It is also interesting to know that the USA still has the highest corporate tax rate in developed nations, and jobs continue to go overseas. But what about loopholes in the tax system? Many of these companies do not pay any taxes. That is true. It certainly isn't fair, and it certainly isn't right, that some people pay taxes and other people do not. But that is not the point. The point is, that our country was more prosperous when we had no income taxes. We had a stronger middle class, and much less poverty than we do now. It is very important that we reform the tax system. But what about roads and bridges? What about police and health care? What about all of the services that our taxes pay for? We had all of those things before the IRS and before the income tax. We just need to plan and pay for these things on a local level, rather than giving money to the federal government who plays the middleman. The federal government has proven themselves to be very ineffective with our money. If we fund things locally in a city, county, and state level, then our representatives are more accountable with our money. This is very important. Because when the federal government takes our money, and redistributes it, a big portion of it comes off the top to give their friends tax breaks and loans and another large portion of it goes to foreign wars, to kill brown people overseas. You are right. An awful lot of our tax dollars goes to waging useless wars. Right. So when we expand the federal government, we become a part of the problem. If we condone giving our war waging federal government a bigger piggy bank, then we condone the terrible things that they do with that money. The smaller their piggy bank, the less wars they fight. Just look at Social Security. That was supposed to be a separate fund for our retirement. It was supposed to be untouchable. Yet the government borrowed from that fund, and reduced it to nothing. What they did with the money was the worst thing possible. They waged war, with our retirement fund. So what would stop them from doing the same thing with our money in the future?